us while we're giving a talk <laughs> against the talk. A lot of people actually, <laughs> maybe we should have worked it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm running a local doc. Oh, right. Yes. Cool. Right, right. We're not on the, we're not on the internet. As long as we don't call you, we're in the internet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, cat pictures, always welcome. So, can you all hear me when I speak like this, or do I need to be closer to the mic? Closer, closer, this is better? Okay, all right. All right, so our talk is um, Drupal.org changes to support new contributors and mentors. And if you want to follow along on your own devices, you can uh, view the same presentation that we're giving here, uh, bit.ly slash do dash changes. And I'm Kathy, I'm ESCT. I work for Black Mesh. Uh, Black Mesh is a hosting company, and they do about 65% of their business is Drupal. Uh, I am not a sysadmin for them, 
Instead, uh, they pay me to uh, mentor other people, uh, work on core, and travel to events. Uh, and they do this uh, as their way of giving back uh, to the Drupal project. Uh, I'm also YesCT on Twitter. Hi, I'm Alina. I work at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where I am a developer and a system administrator, and I'm also a contributor to Drupal 8. Uh, my Twitter handle is Charojeka, in case you want to know how to pronounce it. I have a helpful um, pronunciation guide for it. Uh, so the people that we wrote the talk for, this might match with the people that are in the room, but uh, we're thinking that uh, the target audience here is people who can work on Drupal.org. Uh, and maybe you want to know like what would be, you know, like have a big impact if you work on an issue. Uh, so we're going to suggest some issues that we think will have a, a big impact. Um, it, the other kind of people that we think might be here is uh, people who are just curious about like what's going on with Drupal.org and how is it getting better. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to run down some of the top Drupal.org issues um, that we think will remove some barriers uh, to contribution, especially for people who are new uh, to contributing. Uh, we're also going to uh, talk about some ways that Drupal.org has recently gotten better already. All right, so let me give you a little uh, content overview. Um, we're going to start with talking about what already works and what has recently gotten better. Um, we're going to address uh, a little bit the pain points um, that people have. And finally, we're going to focus on a few um, important issues that we think are important um, that we want people to um, start working on or focus on and pay more attention to. So why are we here? We want to increase communication about what is happening with Drupal.org. We want to get people involved with issues where the community can help. And we also want to concentrate efforts of, um, the, of people that work on Drupal.org on issues that will have big effect on improving contributor experience, or CX. So who's behind um, Drupal.org? That mess of servers and cables. We have... <laughs> Wait, the, the Josh, Josh says they're neater than the cables look in the picture. Great. So we have the Drupal Association. Um, we have uh, TVN, Drum, Basic, and OP Davies. Great, and some of those people are here. Thanks. Yay! <laughs> we also have volunteers, people from the community. And we're going to just name a few, but there's a lot more. Uh, ML Hess, Silefen, and Newton, Coltrane, and Danny Girl. We also have a Drupal Software Working Group. And also some of you are here, TVN. Webchick, Drum, David Hernandez, and the SCT. And if you're wondering what the Drupal.org software working group does, it helps define the overall technical strategy for Drupal.org properties, and it also communicates the community needs to the DA staff. So how do you keep up to date with what's happening with Drupal.org? There are two um, important pages that you can visit to uh, find out what has changed. They're basically change records um, for Drupal.org and uh, infrastructure. And there's also, of course, we all have issues, so there's also Drupal.org issue queues. If you're wondering what those are, well, there are 41 projects uh, for Drupal.org, um, which uh, I encourage you to look through and find. Okay, so let's talk about things that work. We have the issue metadata, which is on the issue node page with collapsible field set. It was broken during the V7 upgrade, but it's back working again really nicely. So as you can see up there, there is um, our issue metadata and also um, issue summary and relationships, files, and um, credit and commu committing. We have related and parent fields, which help us connect issues together um, to each other and also to meta issues, so we have a better organization. So as you can see here um, in the screenshot, you can 
find um, your issues by title, and um, you can also add related issues. And what happens is that they are shown on the sidebar um, with the parent issue, child issues, and if you um, add related issues, they will be shown as referenced by. We have a responsive uh, blue cheese theme. Hooray! So <laughs> you can now view um, your issues on your phone or, mobile, uh, or another mobile device, which is great. So let's talk about a little bit um, on the recent improvements. Profiles. Profiles are important because um, they give the kind of a face to all the contributors. And um, since last DrupalCon, we all got our own custom URLs, which is great. We're no longer just numbers. We have usernames. <coughs> so um, let me show you what my profile looks like. Um, so you can see my um, organization organization's logo. You can see the Drupal events I've been to. There are um, some fields that I can add um, for my contributions, and I can also select how I'm contributing, how I'm involved in the community. Account creation uh, has uh, improved as well. Here's a, a screenshot of the new user account creation. It has been redesigned, and the help desk, the help text um, is more helpful. <laughs> uh, once you create a, a new user account, you are automatically logged in, so you can just start browsing the site right away. Um, the account um, is going to have a little bit of a, a limited functionality until you confirm your email address. And uh, all new users have a, a little blue bar that says new, which is great because it um, kind of uh, makes it useful for other contributors to note to be extra patient with the person or extra helpful. We also have, in addition to being uh, a new user, we also have a community role for our longer time uh, users, which allows them to automatically, to, uh, to confirm new users. So um, if you're working with someone and mentoring them and they just created a Drupal.org account, you can right away confirm them that they're not a, a spammer. Um, previously, this was something that uh, very few people could do, and now it's something that a lot of people could do. Like, Thousands of people can do it. I bet most of the people in the room can do it. Yeah. Issue comment attribution, something that uh, Dries spoke at, about at the keynote, which is great. Um, I tested it out just a couple of days ago. So I can um, attribute uh, comments um, to an organization. The important thing to note, the organization must have an organization page. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> I created mine. You are the university now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> um, in addition to attributing comments, uh, you can also, uh, project maintainers can also uh, list supporting organizations on their projects. So um, you can select an organization, and I bet they have to have an organization page, and include how they helped, and automatically this will appear on the, pro on the organization's page um, in the marketplace. And uh, next we have tag autocomplete sorting, which is a ESCT favorite. So in um, this improvement, we ha our tags, both in the advanced search and in uh, issue metadata, are now sortable by usage. So the high usage tags are at the top. So this, this makes it easier to use the right tags. Yeah, this is like the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> this is really great. All the typos float down to the bottom. You won't get the wrong ones anymore. This is like so nice. And again, this is both on, on the issue metadata and also the advanced search. The issue metadata location. So this is a pretty important piece of a page because um, it tells you the status, the, the version, the component, the priority. It, it gives you a lot of information about an issue. Now in a wider screen view, this um, information is located to the side. But in the narrow screen view, previously it was floated all the way down to the bottom. 
well. Now it's all the way at the top, which is great. It makes it easier to look, th look up that information and hit that update this issue button. And uh, finally, we come to project governance. So having undefined structures and processes can be confusing to new contributors. Um, and so we've made an effort to make explicit the things that, that happen with um, Drupal.org issues and who to talk to about all the things. So there's an issue, uh, number 2457875, which is, um, I have a quote from it, a document that builds on the ideas that have been blogged about or presented at Drupal events by many people and attempts to clearly document how things are done and also proposes some incremental improvements. So what that document has is it answers questions such as, what is a core contributor? What is a maintainer? What are the different types of maintainers? How are decisions made? Who are the Drupal core maintainers and what do they do? And it also answers a lot of uh, questions that were asked on the issue in one nice um, page. Okay, so those are some things that worked, some recent changes of things that have gotten better. And then we're gonna provide a little motivation for the issues that we're gonna talk about that we're recommending would have an effect on um, improving things. Uh, so there's different types of people that try and contribute. Um, one is Drupal users. They're already using Drupal. They're familiar with the site already. And they hear about this contribution thing, and they finally want to take that step. They're like, I want to do it. Um, the, some of the pain for those people is uh, if they find the uh, getting involved guide, uh, that documentation uh, about how to start contributing is confusing and not concise. Um, the other kind of way that people like think to themselves, oh, I want to help with something, is different. They might be looking at a particular problem, Google to find an issue, and on that issue, there's no help for them. They, you, you look at the issue and you, you don't know what to do next, um, and uh, sometimes the issue summary is vague, uh, there's no background information on the issue, um, uh, and there may not be a clear explanation of what like the problem is. It could just be like one line on the issue, and then there's a patch on the issue, and you're like, okay, I have the same problem, but I have no idea how to help this issue go forward. Um, these people who are Drupal users, they don't know who to ask their questions to, so they may have some questions uh, about the issue or how to work on it, and they don't know who they can talk to. Uh, and there's no cross-link uh, to other docu uh, documentation, maybe about the general problem. So maybe this is a usability problem. There's no like cross-link to documentation about like, hey, these are the like current thoughts about how we should address these things, and here's all the people that are also working on usability. Like it's all isolated and all by itself. Uh, right now, in order to work on an issue. Uh, you need to know the secret tags that are involved. Um, you need to know how to search for those tags. Uh, you need to know that there is another group about that topic. So you need to know that on, on groups.drupal.org, there is a usability group where people talk about things. And you don't know that if you're only looking at the issue. Uh, you need to know that there could be an initiative, like a group of people working together on an issue and how to get involved with that. Um, but that's not obvious. Um, and um, yeah, so that's some of their pain. Uh, there are other kinds of people though that want to contribute to Drupal. There are people who are contr contributors already to other open source projects and, uh, and they are uh, want to get involved with Drupal for whatever reasons. Um, they want to see how it works. Um, they start a new project with this new technology. Um, they want to branch out. They came to an event with a friend and they want to like just see what's going on. Uh, for those people, they are, their pain is that they end up having to learn an older technology while they're trying to do something new. Uh, so they end up having to learn how we work in the issue queue with patches while they're trying to figure out how to contribute to this whole new technical thing that they've not worked with before, and that's frustrating. They would rather use uh, a Git style pull request, or they'd just rather use GitHub. 
they're also frustrated because they can't just edit in place to fix like really simple things on the issue. They're like, I want to fix this really simple thing. If there's a patch already, I have a really simple improvement. You know, you're on your phone. You just want to like help, but you can't. You have to like wait till you get to your computer so you can do like get clone and do the whole thing. Um, the way that we work on issues in our Drupal issue queues, uh, we expose all of our faults. We upload a lot of patches and they stay on the issue forever. So if you, um, if you look at an issue that's existed a while, you might see 20 solutions that were not good enough to get in and one solution that is good enough to get in. And people from other open source projects, I think in particular, are terrified of this. They don't want other people to see their intermediate work. Uh, they're not, um, in, their, in our Drupal community, um, our best people upload broken patches all the time. And then five minutes later, they're like, uh, oh man, I can't believe I you know, did that. And then they upload a little fix to it. And then you know, two days later, they're like, that was a terrible idea. I'm taking this in a whole new direction. And so when we see our best people do that, and we've seen this over and over again, we start to believe in this uh, culture of bravery and that we learn from each other and things. But other people from other projects, they are scared of that. <laughs> okay, so are some Drupal people. <laughs> um, ah, so the other thing that they want to do is if, if a contributor from another that already has experience with other open source projects comes to our issues and they see a solution um, or they see that there's a s suggested solution, like a patch on an issue, what they want to do is they want to do a nice code review. They want to help and give feedback. Um, but they don't know how to do that on Drupal.org. They don't know about the secret Dreaditor. Um, and if they do find Dreaditor, they're like, mm, I would rather have GitHub style code review tools. So there's a whole bunch of things. Um, another group of people that have pain are uh, mentors. And these mentors are involved with new contributors. And that's why they're in our talk, because helping them will also help new contributors. Um, mentors pain revolves a lot around keeping an a list of issues that they want to return to to help people they have already started a mentoring relationship with. Typically mentors are v very experienced contributors and they have long lists of issues that they're following. They have long lists of issues that they are working on. They have issues like all kinds of issues, but they want to keep a separate list of issues that they don't need to work on themselves, but they want to come back to. And that would really help because it would strengthen uh, the relationship between people. They wouldn't just mentor somebody one time, but they could return and grow and like really uh, expand that relationship. Uh, so instead, what mentors do right now is they use browser bookmarks. Um, they subscribe to all issues and use tags in Gmail to tag things. Um, uh, and they would really like to have lists of favorites or just different lists of different kinds of issues uh, on Drupal.org. Um, part of the problem with Gmail is the issue comments are difficult to read in the email format. Um, and if you list all your issues with a Gmail tag, um, you, you're essentially looking at subject lines in Gmail where what you really want is you really want to see like the results that you get on an advanced search on Drupal.org, which is fantastic and really super useful. Um, so they would like that. Um, some of the same things um, as new contributors um, bother mentors since they invest a lot of time in helping new contributors get around these uh, quirks or they invest a lot of time explaining the, some like secret information that really bothers mentors not because they have like not because they are like oh man I really wish I knew about Dreaditor but because they feel like they're wasting their time explaining these things to new contributors when they could be if that stuff all just worked they could actually be mentoring All right, so the other group of people that some of these suggestions will help are just all contributors. They'll all benefit um, from it. And, and some of these um, things are that everybody kind of experiences the pain of, no matter what they are, is um, they don't see any recognition of work that they do. 
So we have a lot of profile improvements, but one of the things that uh, you don't see is when you work on issues, you don't see that show up on your profile, and that makes people sad. Um, uh, all contributors uh, are affected by the fact that um, reviewers are not always credited for their work, and reviews take a lot of work to do, and a good review is worth so much. Um, and um, because anybody who wants to work on issues needs to do things like find the issue that they have once worked on or find the issue that they want to work on, uh, searching for issues is really hard. So if we can help that, that will also help everybody. Okay, so some candidate issues to solve some of these pain points. Um, one of them is issue 2332789, and it is reduce novice contribution differences and consolidate novice contribution landing pages, content, and blocks. And so this is um, our novice contribution guide. So if you come to Drupal.org and you're like, I want to contribute, uh, and you're like, oh, look, a, a getting involved guide, and then you start to read the guide, it, um, it has a lot of landing pages, and you end up having to go to a page, to a page, to a page, to a page before you can find any like any action that you can take. Um, there's also some sidebar blocks that are like getting involved, sidebar blocks, and those show up in multiple places. And there's like two of them that are similar, but they're different. So like you can't find the thing that you're looking for. Um, the content there is not very well curated. Some of it's old. Um, and we also have like dashboard information, which is like getting involved. So we have like all these different ways, like current content that we have, and we just need to go through it, consolidate it, make it simple, simpler and more actionable. Just, Thanks. wait a second. I'm sorry. I used the word just. I didn't mean that. <laughs> what I meant was this is a huge uh, job, and it's going to take a lot of thought to do it, um, but we really need to do it. Okay, so you want to be, uh, you, you reach that um, get involved guide and you read it and you're like, yeah, I want to get involved. So you want to start working on issues. Now, before we can work on issues, we have to find one that is suitable and that applies to our interests and our expertise. And also, we want to find an issue that other people care about because that's the way to move it forward. So here we have um, an issue. The number is 1290740. And it is, uh, the title is, How to Label, Aggregate, and Expose Issues, Docs, Forum Posts, and Groups to Topic Pages. This issue is important because it helps, um, helps us find issues to work on by topic. And it might um, indicate what is a priority right now for this topic. And it could also be um, a mix of curated and automated content. You're probably wondering, well, what does that look like? So here uh, is a mock-up that is posted on this issue. And what it shows is there's recent activity from issues and from groups on the right-hand side in the sidebar. Uh, there's a list of people and their expertise so that you know who to talk to. There is also a curated summary field and a list of links. Um, we also have on the right top-hand side, the topic metadata. So really, when you look at it, what does it remind you of? Because for me, it reminds me of Meetup, but for issues. All right, so let's say we found an issue. What next? What we want to do is for um, a contributor that comes to an issue, we want to show them all the relevant tasks for an issue that could be customizable per project. We want to indicate what tasks still need to be done and we want to expose instructions for tasks that need to be done. Well, how are we doing this right now? Well, you must know about Dreaditor. You must know about this insert tasks template. And then once you click that button, you must determine which of this HTML that you have to read through is um, applicable to the issue. So you have to uncomment it or comment it. Now when done, you, you can delete it or comment it back. We don't know. That's not clear. So we have an issue, 2013222. And the title of this issue is Add Issue Tasks to Project Issues and Correlate Tasks 
with hand documentation. So instead of a manual process, it should be easy to expose tasks and automatically link to handbook pages. And this is something that will be helpful both for new contributors and also returning contributors, occasional contributors, and someone who just needs to have that information refreshed um, as they look on an issue. It will also help people who land directly on an issue from a Google search. So from this issue, we have a mock-up here in which issue tasks are listed as um, a selectable uh, multi-select field. And once you select which tasks are applicable, it would show up um, in the issue metadata, um, similar to the way that we show issue tags right now. There is another issue that has a slightly different approach to this, uh, to resolving this. It is 2193871, and the title is Create an Action Block for Short Messages for Users and Visitors. This um, solution, or this, this, uh, the work in this issue, focuses on the, on the next step in the process, the general direction of how to address the pain point of not knowing how to move an issue forward. Finally, we have issue 1393226, which is to encourage the use of the issue summary template. And <clears throat> this issue falls under the integrate Dreadditor features into the .o, so that we wouldn't have to go and um, find out about Dreadditor install and install the extension in order to use its features. The explicit issue summary can make it very clear for um, contributors what to do next, what, what steps to take. So what are the steps in this issue um, where it's moving forward? The last suggestion made was to use BU Editor for templating. So if you're interested in this, um, go ahead and uh, follow this issue. Okay, so you got involved, you found an issue, maybe worked on it. Um, reviewing is hugely important. Uh, we can't fix anything without it, and we should make it uh, easier. We can make it easier. Uh, one of the things that we can do uh, that will improve experience for everybody is we can automate uh, our coding style feedback. Uh, this exposes it to people because they'll submit a, a, a proposed solution to an issue, they'll make a patch, and then if the bots responded back, uh, with suggestions um, like coding style things that this patch um, added that was bad, um, that comes back immediately. So you don't have to go like, oh, I wonder if Drupal has coding standards, and then go try and find them in our docs page, and then read through them all. This would give you feedback like telling you like, oh, you violated these ones. <laughs> well, that's the, okay, so the comment was the if, if we have automated feedback, the language should not be too harsh. And the cool thing about making it automated is, yes, we should make sure of that, but also it won't matter as much because people take automated feedback from a machine much less personally than they do, like, so some contributor might, like, post up a, a, a proposal on, a, um, on an issue and then, like, Three days later, a human looks at it, and they give them like, oh, you violated these coding standards. Maybe they do it even nicely, uh, and um, they, it, it makes them feel bad. Uh, also, they had to wait a long time to get that feedback. Uh, the feedback that the reviewer gives them may or may not include links to the actual coding standards, so they can't tell whether or not this is this person's opinion about how the code should look, or whether or not it's actual policy. And if it comes from a machine, the machine can be like, oh, you, you know, this is not the standard, here's a link to the standard, right? So it solves, it can make it just more consistent, faster, and easier to take because it's coming from a machine. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we have this um, 
habit sometimes, um, and I think we all do it, we do these things, these drive-by Dreadeter reviews, where we, we open up the patch, we look at the code, and like we can't help but notice these things. We're just like, oh, the spacing is wrong. And you're like, you want to say something, but you don't want to say anything, and it's like really super distracting from actually looking at the solution and trying to decide if the solution there is good or bad or how to improve it or what kind of useful questions a reviewer could ask about the solution. So it's good. It's a better experience for the person who's submitting a patch, and it's a much better experience for a reviewer because by the time they actually look at the code, the person who submitted the patch has probably submitted like six of them already and totally fixed their style stuff because they got such quick automated feedback with links to actually how to fix it. Um, so it'll make reviewing a much better experience for people who do reviews and they could focus on giving better reviews. We even have a um, we even have an IRC factoid about like this kind of experience and it's called spinach. So if you ask that IRC bot spinach, it'll give you a, a little link about the fact that it's hard when you're doing a review to ignore those coding standards things. Um, okay, so another issue. Uh, 248015. This one is um, style cold blocks so that 80 characters did not awkwardly wrap in comments on Drupal.org issues. So uh, on Drupal.org, we do our discussion about the code in the same place uh, that we discuss like the general problem. So they're on comments. And um, what we do is we'll take a hunk of code from the patch and put it in code tags inside our comment, and then we'll discuss it there. And when we do this, the width of the field that comments hold is not wide enough to hold 80 characters in fixed width font. And it makes it really super hard to read. And I don't think this is a difficult issue to solve. I don't know. So this might be like a accessible thing, like if, you're, if you've never helped with Drupal Dynamics before. Um, and it doesn't like require any like massive, I don't think, changes to things. So this, this was just, which would just be nice to fix. Um, okay, uh, another thing about code reviews is our code review tools. Uh, so uh, there's a very long, uh, interesting, well-documented discussion. This is not an issue. So this is node 313218, uh, and its title is Implement Select, oh, that's a weird title. Uh, it's implement uh, fabricator components. Oh, select fabricator components on Drupal.org. So some of it. So um, we had this uh, history a long time ago. Uh, we wanted to migrate Drupal.org from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. And that took a while. And during that time, we were feature frozen. We were like, we're not improving Drupal.org. We just need to migrate. And then once we migrate, we can add new features and improve things. And so we did. So somebody migrated it. And um, we've been improving things, and the rate of improvement is getting faster and faster. And so what we can do now is go back to our three-year-old discussions and ideas that we had three years ago. We had so many really good ideas, and now we can be like, oh, we can finally implement them. And there's, so there's this really old conversation about, should we move to GitHub? And, um, and there's a lot of different reasons to do it, but one of them is because people want a nice code review tool. So an opt an um, instead of moving to GitHub, we could actually get a nice code review tool. And there was some semblance of consensus that this might be a good way to go. Okay, then we have the general problem of not knowing who to talk to, who to ask questions um, when you want to figure out how to help or how to help on a particular issue. So we can improve that uh, with issue 1854480, which is uh, remove inactive maintainers from maintainers.txt. Now this is really update maintainers.txt. <laughs> title is kind of. Um, we sometimes will keep main, uh, people listed in maintainers because we have a long release cycle, right? So we're at four years. So we might keep somebody in there who worked, who was active two years ago as kind of like a recognition of all the hard work that they did. Um, but we also need to identify who we can talk to right now about this thing. And so if we update this doc, which is in the code base, um, that will help because you can say like, oh, I wonder who's, you know, who I could ask a question to about the general um, direction that 
uh, accessibility is going in, you can be like, oh, that, you look it up in maintainers.txt, and then there's a place, and those lists of names that are there are accurate. So this issue is about making that list more accurate. Um, there's also 2458333, uh, design discuss how to help people understand the formal structure of Drupal core. So one of the things that um, we mentioned earlier that is an improvement that we've already done is we have got this handbook page on uh, Drupal core uh, maintenance, uh, maintainers, committers, uh, the different roles that we have, how decisions are made. So that handbook page is really good, but it's still on a handbook page. Uh, so what we can do is we can expose that information on issues. So if you're on an issue that's tagged with accessibility, Maybe we could display there who are the people that you might talk to about accessibility. Then you don't have to know about maintainers.txt, and you don't have to know about this handbook page, and we put that information where people need to see it. Um, there's, yeah, so we can expose some of that information that we put in the handbook page in a more actionable place. All right, we also have 2232393. Uh, add an option to the issue search form to return the list of commenters instead of issues. So we have an advanced search for all of our projects, and you can be like, I want to see 8.0.x issues in core that have the tag usability, um, and you get a list of ish a table with rows, and each row is an issue, and you can sort by like, Date. So you can be like, I want the oldest ones or the ones that have more recent comments. What would be really great is if we can have a similar page where you want to, where you say 8.0.x issues in core uh, that are tagged usability, but instead of seeing the issues that result, what you see are a list of people who are active on those issues. And you could sort, maybe you could restrict your search by date. So I would like to see people who have commented on issues that deal with usability in the last six months. And then you could sort that list by the number of comments that they have. This will expose this organic information, um, not necessarily like who's in maintainers.txt, because maintainers.txt is not always up to date, and you don't always need to talk to a maintainer to know about the current direction of the project or to get your question answered. But what you would like is to know like who the heck is active in usability right now. And if you don't read all the issues in core and you don't know these people, you know, it's really hard and that's why sometimes working on an issue is easier for like insiders because they're like, oh, you know, my issue got tagged with needs usability review uh, or accessibility review. I'm going to go ask so-and-so to do it. But if you don't already know those people, then you're at a disadvantage if you're trying to solve that. And we shouldn't have this like secret information. We should be exposing these things and we can expose them. So. Um, there's also um, uh, the multilingual uh, initiative does this a little bit. Um, they use uh, the project uh, Rocket Ship, and they do screen scraping on uh, Drupal.org issues, and they look for issues that are tagged multilingual, and then they screen scrape to get the commenters' usernames, and then they, they, they display all of the usernames as a way both to thank all of those people, um, and also uh, people who have commented recently are a different uh, font, and people who have commented a lot are a bigger font. So you can look at that and you can be like, oh, these people are the recent people who are doing a lot of work in this area. And it's really nice, both as a, a thank you and a recognition, and also as a resource for people who are new to know who to talk to. And that type of information would go really well on the topic pages that I mentioned before. Okay. So we got involved, we worked on issues, uh, we got them reviewed, now it's time to get some credit. Uh, giving credit is crucial in collaborative open source projects. We give credit for patches and uploaded files, but those are not the only types of contributions that are being made. So in this issue, 2230579, um, whose title is Policy, No Patch, Allow Crediting Reviewers and other non-coders as first-class contributors, we want to make it easier to credit reviewers in order to encourage more reviews and reviewers and to move issues forward. So what could that look like? 
Well, here's a, a, a mock-up that's posted on the issue, and in it you see a drop-down that um, w in which you can identify the type of uh, contribution that is being made. So we can, there are several proposals on what type of information um, should be in the drop-down. Um, you can identify it by comment type, whether it's a proposal, a patch, um, a review, or issue management. And then there are different contribution types or different uh, topic uh, topic areas such as accessibility, testing, documentation. Um, in, in both cases, we want to, the goal is to highlight the, vari the variety and importance of contribution types um, on uh, issues on Ghetto. All right, uh, so once you work on issues, eventually what happens is you collect a bunch of issues that you've worked on or that you're in the middle of working on or that you think you might want to work on when they get to a certain state. Uh, so we need a way to track our issues. And uh, there are a lot of them. So I work on core. Uh, so not only do I have a lot of issues that I work on, but there are just so many that I don't. And um, uh, some of the things that, um, that would be relevant are personal tags, improving search, um, adding a way to create a follow-up of an issue so that it knows that it's a follow-up. Uh, there is, there's two um, issues that deal with uh, possibilities for making lists of different issues. Right now you just, you follow an issue or you don't. Um, it would be nice if you could also favorite certain issues. Um, that would create two lists though. You would have the ones you follow and the ones that are favorites. Uh, another option is to have a more generic way where you just, you could just create lists and just have multiple of them and uh, you maintain your own lists. Uh, so there's two, two, seven, one, Eight seven seven two two seven one eight seven seven, which is allow per user tagging of issues. That one's about like making your own list. Uh, there's also uh, one that like has I think a better possibility of uh, has more consensus and is simpler. This one is one six two one seven one four. Allow a bookmark and favoriting of issues without abusing the assigned field or issue tags. Uh, and this is just the idea that you could have a favorites, and at least you would have two lists then. Oh, and the other one that I talked about before, 2271877, is um, more complicated, uh, would also be pretty cool. There's some things, though, to discuss about the direction of this, like are your lists public or not? So like if you go to somebody's profile page, or if you know the secret URL for the view that generates this thing, um, can you see what lists people are keeping uh, and then the issues that are on them? So right now, like it's, we can see who's following which issues. So I don't necessarily know that we have a privacy concern with releasing this information because we're already exposing it. In the advanced search thing, you can put yes CT in the following field and you can see the issues that I'm following. This would be elaborating that because you could see the issues not just that I'm following, but how I'm categorizing the issues and which issues are in different categories. So I think there's a lot of advantage here and uh, at least not a privacy problem. Uh, but it's definitely more complicated because you don't know how to present the information or how to update it. Um, this, is, this is complicated. Okay, so we talked about all these different issues. Um, how do we work on Drupal.org? Well, there's a handbook page that explains how to do it. Uh, basically, you get a uh, development environment with a copy, a sanitized copy of Drupal.org. Now, what would be really great is if the DDO projects, um, issue queues, or on issues, uh, would have a link to that handbook page to make it even simpler to find or faster to find. Um, you should also join IRC channels. Uh, Drupal-infrastructure and Drupal-contribute. And finally, 
DrupalCon has just started, so we want to give uh, a few session highlights um, that are coming up for sessions that you might be interested in related to Drupal.org. Tomorrow, we have at one o'clock the pain points of learning and contributing in the Drupal community with uh, KGO and FGM. At 2.15, we actually have two sessions that we want you to go to. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna do that, but <laughs> the first one is issue workspaces, a better way to collaborate in uh, Drupal.org issue queues with TVN and Mixologic. And uh, the second one is how do we encourage repeat contributors contributions to Drupal core with uh, Hussein Abbas and David Hernandez. Right, so the one about issue workspaces, that's about making a Git workflow for Drupal.org. And on Thursday, there's the Drupal.org infrastructure team meeting at 1 p.m. And also there are on ongoing conversations um, in, the Drupal, the, in the mentoring group on groups.drupal.org. Uh, uh, so, uh, if you're inspired to work on some of these things, some of them are complicated, some of them are more simple, uh, but you might also want to just try your hand at making any change in Drupal.org, but that's it's kind of scary to do by yourself and not always obvious. Luckily, we have sprints. We have sprints during the week and on Friday and also on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but if you're new to contributing or to contributing to Drupal.org, Friday is your day. Uh, you can get an orientation early in the morning with a t uh, workshop to get you set up with tools and explain how issue queues uh, work. And there are mentors there and there will be uh, groups sprinting on many different topics. And one of the topics is improving Drupal.org. And Tatiana will be leading that sprint. And she has uh, probably some issues in mind of things that are relevant to Drupal.org right now. It probably doesn't align with my list. Um, but, but not, I mean it's not one to one is what I mean. Um, but there are still things that are relevant in Drupal.org that she thinks uh, have an actionable thing to do on them. And, uh, and you can work with other people who know about how to work on Drupal.org and, and work together. Um, it's it's going to be a much better experience doing that on um, like fixing one small thing on an issue that there is already some work on that Tatiana thinks is worth working on right now, like that's gonna be a really good contribution experience for you. Like pulling up one of the issues that we've mentioned here and going home next week and being like, I'm going to solve this, that is not gonna be a good contribution experience for you. But like you might wanna follow the issues that we mentioned, read like the background on them, uh, keep up to date on them, maybe try some other issues uh, that are about fixing Drupal.org and gain some experience with that and then maybe come back to some of these or you, you, you don't even necessarily need to work on them. You might just want to know that they exist and be like, if I have a, you know, if I want to give some feedback on something, maybe something somebody else will work on it, at least you know the place to give feedback on these topics. Um, but Friday, nine o'clock in the morning, it goes to six. Uh, there will be help to get you involved. Everybody, if you know what your blue is and you've used it before, we have things for you to do. And it doesn't have to be about Drupal.org. So I'll be doing the core mentoring bit uh, there will be uh, contrib things happening, and it'll just be a super experience. Really, like it really was. It really will be great. Uh, all right, so um, we started a little late um, because of the picture taking and the keynoting um, and stuff. So I think we still have some time for some questions. And there's a mic right in the middle of the room. Um, also, uh, if you could please rate our session, um, I think you. Uh, you go to the um, event website for that, um, and here's a short link to our session page there. It's bit.ly slash node 439, because that's the node that is our session. Um, so please, uh, comments, questions, microphone. <laughs> um, we can also uh, answer questions after. So if that's it, then thank you all for uh, coming. Um, that's the end. You've been the nicest audience. <laughs>
Uh, we, we can put a link to the slides on the session page, but it's also bit.ly slash do dash changes. Um, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a Git repo in Reveal in the Drupal Mentoring GitHub project. Um, so if you want to like update the talk uh, and give it somewhere else, you can do that or use parts of it. Um, there's also some other talks in that repo um, that are like mentory related and we're trying to like collect them there so people can reuse them or make suggestions to them. So that's uh, on GitHub, that's Drupal mentoring. Thank you for coming. I'm really like impressed at the number of people that are in the room. I think there's like 20 or so, which is like really super awesome. It's not going to be boring. It's not going to be boring. It's going to be amazing. Thank you for coming. My, my track, my track chair, and, 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 support. <laughs> and worker of, of things. Good job. Thanks. Elena works really hard. You made her work. Did you other slides? No, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not make her do it. She's just awesome. All right, now what do we do? I haven't even thought that far. <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Kelly. Kelly. Kathy. Thank you for coming. Are you, will you come on Friday? Oh, is this your first Drupal Con? Ah, well, your next Drupal Con. Uh, make sure you book your plane for like Saturday night. Yeah, because like Friday is awesome. And it's just it's very low stress and it's and it's really it's really great. I got that from Jam. Yeah, uh, Jam and Kathy. People were ask, asking you to do more, so. I should do yours, but yeah. people ask questions. Whiskey, don't touch. Hey, thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh huh. So now we have to get together and work on the next one. <laughs> uh, maybe next maybe one? tonight. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, Ten forty-five. Yeah, we're in. Oh, I, I work we're in decent. We're in decent shape. And actually, Alina said that she could help out. Okay. Like, there's that thing about moving the the, the um, photo credits. Like right now, when I move the box, it goes down. And oh. you suggested moving it to the top, so yeah. it stays. Like, if you could fix that, that would be super awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm like. Um. I think a real question is: Do we want to like? There's a bunch of text only we, slides. Do we want to do anything? Yeah, we should go through it and look at it again. Yeah. That, for coming. Um, there's so many other questions. Now that we have some things to do. What am I? We have lunch now. Oh, you know what? I think I might have food to do. And then, okay. So my next. So I. Right. I don't know. 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 Here, let me look at my calendar. Okay. Yeah, I'm not that organized. All I know is that Amitai said that's to go cool. do that's this awesome. thing at 5, and I know that Amitai has oh, like a meetup at 5. Okay, so I have booth right there. now, okay. and then I wanted to go to... Hi. 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 Oh, and there's also a Latin American lunch get together. Uh, okay. And then the socket went to yeah, talk, and then I don't think I have any obligations. But then later today at 5, Jeremy's doing a CI talk, which I... Might get. Uh, Greg is giving his client oh, okay. talk. I might go to. I saw him the other. Well, I'm, 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 I'm,
Uh, after that, yeah, five o'clock today. That, that he said he was on his bail time and didn't stay seven months. Oh, after that is the oh yes. Have you ever seen the recording of this person? I haven't either. It's like on my to-do list to do. But All right, I've never I will that. find you link. This is like it's the, the most the amazing talk oh, ever given to people. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that wow. was hysterical. Oh, so tonight it was like he there's the so women in Drupal thing, thing uh, which I mostly skip. Yes, 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 I might like I want to make my talk a little bit more interesting. And then it's Black Mesh Party tonight, and I have to go. Um, so no, it's well, it's in awesome. the it's in the west so though. So maybe maybe, 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 maybe like what we could do is like right, right after Amitai's talk, and you're gonna hear it in the room and it's gonna open. So we're gonna turn on the TV and see what happens. I don't know. Um, maybe we just take fun. You're sending me all of the pictures um, in which Kathy is. Um, right, well, yeah, maybe no, I should. No, no. <laughs> I took yours too. I took a bunch. Right. I could skip it, and after we could meet at Weston. 